So here with the news today, of course, we know yesterday Theresa May announced that she would be pushing to have an election on June the 8th. And today we have had Parliament and the MPs have voted on it in a massive majority. Uh, 522 voting for the general election and 13 voting against against wanting an election which apparently is mostly of labor and some independents voting against it labor obviously scared that they aren't going to do very well in this election which um i think is is more than fair more than more than fair and i think one of the northern irish uh, S sdlps alistair Mac mcdonnell uh, so nine nine Labour MPs opposed the snap election, as did three independents and the SDLPs, Alistair McDonnell, so one of the Northern Irish um, parties, the the uh, Social Democratic uh, Liberal Party, I believe that is what it stands for. Um, but be besides that, so th I mean, it was always going to go through because I mean, the opposition to the government can't really. No, it, it's it shows a, a very weak hand up on part of the opposition if they didn't want to vote for uh, for the election, obviously, because they were they're not in government. How can they be like, yeah, we're fine with uh, not being in government. We're not going to get in government anyway. I mean, yeah, even though th in realistic terms, they'll know they don't have a chance. But even even so, there's still a lot to play for. They can snatch seats and. But the thing is also that you have the risk of they could also lose their own seats. And um, so, yeah, I mean, there was never going to be much doubt here that there wasn't. The MPs were not going to vote for uh, the general election. But, uh, yeah, so this is good. So it's it's going to be happening. It's in it only seven, eight weeks or so from now. So, I mean, it's going to be pretty intense. And I think on the 5th of May, Parliament will dissolve and then will it will go full out uh, campaigning after that. And this has all worked out. So they've made it so the EU are, are working on their... Uh, they have made it so when, uh, once the, the election is over, it will be about the same time as the EU are ready to uh, start negotiations over Brexit. So it won't, it shouldn't affect the um, Brexit negotiations as they are working on their position at this point uh, for the no negotiations at this point. So it's not going to delay any of that because come uh, 8th of June we'll have the election and then the next day or the morning you'll know who's won and then you'll know who's going to be negotiating against them and then it, around that time they will come with uh with that what they want to s start negotiating and then we can begin negotiating on uh, brexit now um one thing uh, i've came across was of course um yes you you've got george osborne who's going to be uh hanging up his boots to uh, continue his work with the Evening Standard. So his uh, seat in Cheshire is going to be up for grabs, uh, but that'll uh, that'll just be uh, an, an, another win for the Tories based on uh, previous results in the area, uh, be all being Tory. So it'll just be a, a Tory replacing a Tory there. So no troubles there. And... Um, of course, the opposition have made a big uh, deal over the fact that uh, Theresa May doesn't want to do the TV debates. But uh, given her position, how weak Labour are and all the other parties, really, it, she doesn't need to debate on TV with any of these parties because, like, the strength of the party speaks for itself. The, the, the Tories are the only party that's really together on anything from a point of strength, really. Uh, that that seem electable really and I mean they are and they're gonna win and it just depends how much they're gonna win by and uh, I mean but you never know you might have some shocks in some areas some people lose 
some of the seats and certain areas and I mean so I mean yeah maybe the Lib Dems will win a couple of seats but it's not going to make a massive difference what they've got nine seats or something at the moment it's not going to make a massive difference if they get a couple more in the great grand scheme of things about how people vote on uh, issues really if you have a couple of Lib Dems who want to vote against some some uh, EU things the Brexit negotiations and whatnot. Um, but obviously that's why the Tories want to do with it, do this to uh, increase the majority, which I think they'll do. It just depends how much they'll do it by. And I mean, you could really see a big collapse of the Labour Party, certainly. So to the Tories, to some, some might lose to uh, UKIP. But yeah, again, it's difficult to tell how they'll do because I think a lot of the UKIP supporters, I mean, they got 4 million votes last time. So you, you never know. If they if they end up targeting the certain seats like the uh, the donor Aaron Banks, he's gonna be running against Douglas Carswell. He was the only UKIP uh, MP in Claxton and Essex. So if he runs against him there, you would think Aaron Banks has a good chance of winning that. But yet again, the Tories could also uh, do quite well there. And then you've got the issue of the Tories' uh, expenses. Um, scandal of not fully declaring in the last election how much money they spent whether they overspent and weren't al allowed to do that and hence maybe that's why they've called the election as well to sort of hush that out and then get it over with so they can you know get that over with. that certainly would have been part of it as well but also to put us in a better a, s a stronger position when it comes to the election and people are saying Theresa May doesn't have the authority or she doesn't have the mandate to uh, run the country even though her party was elected two years ago yes it wasn't her it was david cameron then but her party still and then her party voted for her so i still think she has the mandate would have had the mandate but up until 2020 but um yeah this i mean this put she's in a position of power now with the la labor being so weak and they're not really being much other uh, authority on this so i mean it'll be interesting to see how the the different parties do see if you could get any seats uh liberal democrats not that interested yeah i, d I don't think they're gonna really do anything especially with the way they they're putting out the rhetoric about trying to stop brexit and all sorts so yeah it's gonna be difficult for all the parties nonetheless and I've s nick Clegg's gonna be running again Apparently Miliband was, was going to be running as well again, which is uh, interesting. I don't think that will make a great difference. And I think Labour actually wanted, uh, some of the Labour people actually want to do badly in this election. It's only to get rid of Corbyn and his Corbynistas from the party. But I think they're screwed for the next however long. So yeah, Miliband's going to be running for Doncaster North. He'll probably win that pretty easily safe labor seats i mean the safe labor seats will probably end up staying labor and large like the the very safe ones but it, i mean they'll some of these marginal places where they maybe won it in the last one or whatever that they, they haven't been labor seats for as long some of them might stay loyal like the um that's what i mean the the true ones the uh in the northeast and the midlands but you never know if after, since a lot of those areas voted for brexit might change but uh we'll see yeah it's because of the woeful state of the labor party yeah. Yeah. if the prime minister is so confident that our hard brexit pro-austerity anti-immigration case is right then she should debate it with opposition leaders yeah. during yeah. the campaign we look forward to the straight fight between the SNP and the Tories. Can the Prime Minister tell the people why she's running scared of a televised debate with Nicola Sturgeon? First of all, can I say to the right honourable gentleman, one of the crucial things we have in this country that underpins our democracy is a free press. 
And I believe that is important, and I believe people in this chamber should stand up for the freedom of the press. And as to the TV debates, I can assure the right honourable gentleman that I will be out there campaigning in every part of the United Kingdom, taking out there our proud record of a Conservative government that has delivered for every part of the United Kingdom. Yes, yeah, so you had one of the clowns from the SNP there, Angus Robertson there, who I absolutely hate. And he, him and the rest of the uh, SNP live on a cloud. Same, similarly, they must have a cloud adjacent to uh, freaking uh, Diane Abbott, where they live in this fairy fantasy socialist land. But, uh, I mean, even they don't agree with each other, but that's how stupid they are. But, um, yeah, I mean saying how, oh, how far right and hard hard brexit and anti-immigration it's like the tories are not like that if only there were <laughs> i'm sure but i mean i wish there were more hard right on some of these things certainly but uh he's so far away, so far off it and similarly with the labor party so off it and i mean yeah he's calling calling i mean if the smp are calling out the labor for being so bad you know something's wrong because I mean, for the SNP at least they are successful in in Scotland. I mean, it doesn't really count for an awful lot because they can't still can't get independence. And I mean, they're popular as they are, but they still can't reach their goal of uh, independence. And uh, I mean, they're still pushing for another referendum on independence, and yet the polls suggest that they wouldn't actually get it. So. Um, yeah, I hate the SMP, and I think Theresa May answered it quite well there. So, props to her. Even though I don't think she can fully be trusted on Brexit, she wasn't a true Brexit, uh, and she, she, and as I said already, she didn't doesn't need to do the TV debates anyway. And I, I don't think I don't think she's actually that good one at debates anyway. Nor does she need to because of how bad the opposition is. And I mean, Nicola Sturgeon is no great uh, orator. She's no great debater either. She just sa- she just wails and uh, s- says something like, "Hey, hey, uh, England, uh, bloody not letting us have the democratic freedom of our country." Uh, the the people of Scotland didn't didn't he vote for uh, for uh, to leave the EU, but uh, we're getting dragged out without <laughs> you know, and it's like. Yeah, you can say a lot of words and like, who cares? Like, and the thing the Scot- SNP don't understand that the way it is now, it is a United Kingdom. That there are no, yeah, yeah. There's four different countries, but the we are one country. You know, they don't one just because some people in one part of the country voted for something does not mean doesn't mean they get like their way or they should have be have any special treatment. They already get special treatment in the. Within the UK, they get far too much money for what they they put into the country. You know, I mean, the the oil isn't worth that much anymore. They would have went bust if they'd gone independent in two, 2014, and I wish they did, because I'm sick of them. And uh, yeah, so back the general election should be interesting, uh, but uh, I think we all know how it's gonna largely how it's gonna go. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the other parties come up with because it's not that long. Which I mean, that that that's part of the uh, cleverness of calling it now. It doesn't give parties like Labour, who are already in in a bad position, much time to sort of recover their image, to to sort of dig themselves out of a hole. And uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how this how that everyone reacts to it. See if they anyone can actually do anything good. Anyone can try and oppose the Tories. None of them will be. Uh, some of them might nick a couple of seats, but that's about it. So yeah, you'll be interested. <laughs> Get it. 